Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Betting Life Podcast brought to you by Fantasy Life. This is episode one. I'm Matthew Friedman, Matt F. E. Workle, and I'm here with Matt McEwen, a.k.a. Dead Prez. As we lead up to the NFL season, we'll be coming at you with lots of episodes, maybe 15 to 30 minutes. We're going to keep these tight, and we're looking at various futures markets, what we're betting in the preseason games, and key questions for a number of teams, questions that we think the answers to will determine how the 2023 season plays out. And today... We are discussing, in my mind, maybe the biggest question of the season. Is Aaron Rodgers still good? The Jets traded away a lot to get him. Uh, They have a potential Super Bowl roster in place, but is he good? Is he still Aaron Rodgers? So we're discussing that on the show today. And then after the show, we're giving our favorites Jets bets on the market right now. All right, McEwen, recently engaged. You are living the dream. How is it going? It's going great. Yeah, I can't wait to uh, hop in on the podcast here. We're going to have a lot of good stuff going on moving forward. And today's episode, like you said, Freeman, I can't wait to get into the New York Jets, Aaron Rodgers, what's happening with this team. So a lot to break down uh, for this episode, for sure. Yeah, so Mr. President, uh, let's go ahead and get started in it. Now, obviously, like the framing of this is a little bit facetious. Is Aaron Rodgers still good? So like, yeah, even if he were the Aaron Rodgers of last season, he would probably still be top 10, top 12, but that's not really what people think of when they think of Aaron Rodgers. They think of the guy who won back-to-back MVPs just a couple of years ago. So, you know, this question of like, is Aaron Rodgers still good? Is he still Aaron Rodgers? Like, where do you fall on that continuum? But to answer the, the question, is Aaron Rodgers still good for him? And I, I would say yes. I think he, he's still very good. I think he can actually return to MVP form this season. And we'll get into that a little bit more as the podcast goes along. But the, my bigger question marks are not necessarily about Aaron Rodgers. It's about the offensive line for the Jets. How will they hold up, you know, protecting him? The schedule for the Jets, we'll get into this as well. These first uh, six, seven games are going to be really tough on them. But I think Aaron Rodgers will return towards an MVP form this season. It's important to note that this is a guy who won back-to-back MVPs. 2020 had one of the best years in NFL history. So a lot to like on that side. Last year, a little bit of a step back, but I'd rather look at his resume and all the years he put together being a top three, top five quarterback in the NFL rather than a one down year. He had a lot of distractions going on last season, some off the field stuff with, you know, does he want to be a Green Bay Packer? What's the future? And then on the field, he didn't have the weapons that he will have at his disposal here in New York. So yes, I do think Aaron Rodgers is still good, but how good will he be? How good can this team be? Uh, That's what we have to figure out here. Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned the schedule. Let's dive into that a little bit more because my feeling is that even if Aaron Rodgers is good, it might not matter because of how difficult that schedule is. And we'll talk about the the first six weeks of the season, which I think are absolutely brutal. But even taking that out of account and just thinking of the schedule holistically, they have the number 26 schedule. So I think like the eighth hardest schedule, if you're looking at um, or like a, a bottom eight schedule. If you're looking at just the uh, the win total market for the teams that they have to face this year. Now, you know, playing in the AFC East, that's already tough. They also have to play the AFC West, right? That's one of the best divisions in football. And they play the NFC East, which is also one of the better div- divisions in football. So they already are kind of up against it in terms of the schedule. And then you look at how that, that season starts out for them a new quarterback on the team. So there could be a little bit of a learning curve. If they had these six games at the end of the season, I would think that they would maybe be better positioned, but they have this at the very beginning of the season, Monday night football, hosting the Buffalo bills. Now they're at home. But there's a pretty decent chance. They lose that game week two short rest, uh, one less day than the Cowboys traveling to the Cowboys there's a chance they lose that game. They will be underdogs in both of those games. Week three, they come back home. They host uh, the Patriots. They will be favored. They should win that game, but there's no such thing as a give me in a division game, especially when you're going against a Bill Belichick defense. So conceivably, like without really bending like the rules of reality all that far, it could be 0-3 to start the season. And then in week four, they, they host the Chiefs, all right? Needless to say, they will be underdogs in that game, right? So in theory, they could be 0-4, and then they head to Denver, 
where they will be going against Nathaniel Hackett, the offensive coordinator. They will be going against the team that he just ran into the ground last year. Talk about like a revenge game. There will be like 40 guys on that roster trying to get revenge on him. It could be 0-5 after that game. And then they come back home to host the NFC champion Eagles. <laughs> they could, in theory, it's not likely to happen, but in theory, like you can see the path to where they could be 0-6 heading into the week seven bye, right? With one of the, the most, like as great as Aaron Rodgers is, I think it would be fair to say somewhat temperamental. So like with a, a fairly temperamental quarterback on a new team, tried to get out of the terrible circumstances he was in, or he thought he was in in Green Bay, went to the the, the big apple, grass is greener situation, and now he's 0-6 heading into the bye. Like, it's not likely to happen, but I'm just saying there is a, a world in which this could go very badly, very quickly for the Jets, even if Aaron Rodgers is having a pretty decent season to start. Yeah, I mean, look, this the schedule is brutal, right? There, there's no way around those first six games being extremely difficult. Uh, in my opinion, if they can go three and three in those first six games, it's a massive win, right? Because then you look towards the back end of their schedule, it lightens up a bit. And I think it's crucial for them to come out and, you know, just try to play 500 football through the first six weeks. Anything above that is obviously a massive bonus. Even two and four Freeman, I think they could survive that. It's really avoiding that one and five, oh, and six start that you alluded to, uh, you know, to avoid a disaster to start the season. But I don't think it's going to get that bad. I do think that they could start this thing around three and three. You mentioned a couple games that they do kind of have to win because like the game versus Kansas City going to be tough versus Philadelphia going to be really tough. Buffalo week one, I don't want to say there's a must win week one. That's a huge game, right? Not only for them to just set the tone in the season, but when you look from a betting standpoint at who's going to win the division, if you like the Jets to win the division, they kind of need to win that game because it's not going to be easy for them to go into the or into Buffalo later in the season and, and win. So that's a crucial game there in week one. An argument that I would make, though, is I think you would rather have this tough part of the schedule early in the year if you're a team led by Aaron Rodgers, just because from a health standpoint, right? Typically in an NFL season, those first six weeks are going to be your healthiest window. As the year goes on, naturally, guys break down. Aaron Rodgers is on the back end of his career. So I think you're going to see the healthiest version of Rodgers in you know, September and October rather than those later games in, in December and January. But, you know, time will tell on that aspect. If I was the Jets, though, I would rather kind of get it out of the way and just go into survival mode, just play 500 football last there, stay around three and three, and then let things happen. But from a schedule standpoint, yes, you can make the argument it's the toughest schedule in all of football in the first six weeks, but that's the AFC this year. The AFC is stacked. There's a lot of really high quality quarterbacks in the AFC, but that's where the Jets might have an advantage. Top five defense a season ago, a top five defense against the pass in particular a season ago. And now you pair DJ Reed, Sauce Gardner in the uh, in the defensive backfield there for the Jets. You can make an argument they're you know one of the best duos in all of football. So it's going to come down to things that I don't think include Aaron Rodgers necessarily, like the defense, like the offensive line in terms of their success. I think Rodgers himself will be okay. It's how good can the uh, surrounding play be for the Jets, in my opinion. Yeah, well, speaking of the surrounding play, uh, Garrett Wilson, like he will be a big factor in all of this. One offensive rookie of the year last year with a, a tremendous season. There's, you know, the the possibility that he takes another step forward and really partners with Aaron Rodgers and they're just this dynamic duo. What do you think of Garrett Wilson? Because I, I do have some thoughts on how the wide receiver dynamic might play out. Mm hmm. I love the upside of Wilson uh, this season. He's getting a lot of comparisons, Freeman, to the Devontae Adams things, right? You know, because Adams and Rodgers had so much success. Now, you look at it and say, okay, Garrett Wilson won Offensive Rookie of the Year with his quarterbacks being Zach Wilson, Joe Flacco, Mike White. Like, now he has a future Hall of Fame quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks that we've seen in football in the last two decades, throwing him the football this season, and he is the number one option. So you would think his numbers would increase, um, from a betting standpoint, though, I think you could make the argument that the Jets almost have too many weapons when you look at a guy like Alan Lazard there coming over, Randall Cobb, who's kind of a security blanket for Aaron Rodgers in this offense. And this is a team who all of a sudden has two high-quality tight ends as well. So it will be interesting to see, uh, you know, how many yards and, you know, from a statistical betting standpoint, Wilson performs. But I think the upside is extremely high. I do think he could get to that Devontae Adams 
territory pretty quick. I mean, this is one of the best young wide receivers clearly in football. So I think it's exciting. I think for Rodgers, he gets a weapon, uh, you know, in Wilson to work with. And, and that's much better than what he had uh, on his team last year. Look what he did with Christian Watson, right? A guy who maybe would not have had that success if his quarterback was not Aaron Rodgers. Wilson's got to be excited to be paired with the future Hall of Famer. And I think he's going to have a big time season. Yeah, I mean, speaking of what Rodgers had on the Packers last year, he had Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb. And those guys have transplanted with him to New York. And I'm of two minds on this. And I, I think like both possibilities we could see bear out. So like on the one hand, I think it is an intelligent move organizationally to bring guys that Rodgers is comfortable with, guys who know the system, especially in training camp. I think that uh, that's really positive to have those veterans there who know the system, familiar with Rodgers, and can help those other younger wide receivers get acquainted with the way of doing things. I think that makes sense. I think part of the challenge though is going to come during the season. When Aaron Rodgers maybe isn't quite on the same page with Garrett Wilson, like we have seen in the past that Rodgers can be a little bit temperamental with younger wide receivers. If a guy screws up, he doesn't want to throw the guy that ball anymore. He would rather throw the ball to Randall Cobb or to Alan Lazard because those guys are supposed to be where they end up being on the field. And he just, he has more of a natural built in established chemistry with them. And my fear is that instead of like taking the time early in the year to invest in the Garrett Wilson connection, he's just going to fall back on the guys that he knows. And then ultimately later in the year, when he needs to be able to get the ball to Wilson, they don't have the established chemistry. So like, I can see how it's a good thing, but there's a risk there as well, that maybe Garrett Wilson doesn't get the ball as much as he should, just because Rogers defaults to the guys that he has built this chemistry and trust with over a number of years. It's very possible. And, that, and that's why when we go back to the uh, betting side of a Freeman, if you look at his total yards on the season, maybe it's not a bad look, right? It, it's it's risky to obviously take his under, but I think the, you know, touches you mentioned, Cobb, Lazard, these are guys that Rodgers has played with in the past. They're going to get a lot of targets here, right? That That's why they came over, Rodgers wanting to play with them. So I, I think there's, there's two ways for it to work. Garrett Wilson can have an outstanding season and still go over or under, excuse me, his season total in yardage, touchdowns, whatever it may be. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see how this will play out. I think from a talent standpoint, these are the best weapons Rodgers worked with in, in some years. Obviously, in Green Bay, he had Devonta Adams, but then there was a, a pretty uh, big drop between Adams and the next you know best receiver. Here, you know, he has a lot of talent. He has some really good young running backs as well, right? That can help him out in the run game, Brace Hall, and you know. So I, I think there's a lot of upside to this Jets team, but there's a lot of weapons uh, on this team as well, which from a betting standpoint can make it a little bit tricky if you want to take you guys over when there's going to be uh, a lot of targets going around from an offensive yeah. standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. And one more thing that I think kind of factors into like this question of what we should expect from Aaron Rodgers with the 2023 Jets, Nathaniel Hackett, you know, I, I mentioned him earlier. He was the head coach last year for the Broncos fired before the season even ended. Like that's how catastrophic his one year tenure was as the head coach for the Broncos, an absolute train wreck as a playing call, as a play caller. And I feel like that, that factors into it here because although Rogers has that, that chemistry, like that established connection with Nathaniel Hackett, who was his, uh, his offensive coordinator in green Bay, it is a little bit different in that he wasn't the play caller. Like that was LaFleur, who was, you know, the, the coach and the play caller in Green Bay. And like we see that there's a significant difference between coordinating and implementing an offense and actually being the guy who sequences plays and calls plays during the game. And, you know, looking back to what he did last year, looking back to what he did with the Jaguars when he was the offensive coordinator there. And then before that, in 2013 and 14 with the Bills, we've never seen Nathaniel Hackett actually be a good play caller so I know what we saw out of Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers there but I'm just saying like I don't think that's necessarily one for one the same thing that we're going to see with the Jets because I honestly I don't even care I'm not even gonna say pardon the pun I don't know if if Nathaniel Hackett can actually hack it as the play caller so that might yeah. be a big hindrance on Aaron Rodgers 
it, well, it's a valid point. And, you know, like you mentioned, LaFleur there in Green Bay, obviously an offensive guy here. Uh, Robert Salah is a defensive mind, right? So you, you would expect Hackett to have the, the full responsibility of doing it. My question is, how many plays is Aaron Rodgers going to call for him? You know, is he just going to kind of be the, the mind behind their offense here and, and Hackett's just the guy with the, with the headset? I, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely a bit concerning if you're high on the Jets like I am this season. That's the one big thing that I circled as a question mark. You know, how will Nathaniel Hackett translate with Rodgers? But the fact that they have play, uh, worked together in the past – makes me feel a little bit better about it, but I don't know if there's anyone out there that thinks that it was a uh, great hire by the Jets to bring Hackett in. Yeah, that's fair. And I mean, Aaron Rodgers, he probably should be the one who's calling a lot of the offense just in terms of like, give him two plays, he can get yep. to the line of scrimmage and he can choose which play he wants to run. But I'm still getting default to like two brains is better than one brain or like better than one brain and one mediocre brain. So like if Rodgers had a good offensive coordinator, that could be something that, you know, gives him that additional boost and helps him get back to the MVP level. So, all right, I, I think we've had a good conversation here. Uh, you know, some some thoughts about how I might be approaching this team, uh, betting it during the season. Uh, you know, I think Rodgers, as an underdog, has historically been pretty great. He hasn't been an underdog all that often because, you know, Aaron Rodgers historically has crushed, but he's going to be an underdog at some point this season, uh, especially those first six games. Uh, Rodgers is an underdog, 33-24-2 and two against the spread, and uh, head coach Robert Salah as an underdog, 16-12 and 12 against the spread. Rodgers in primetime, 41-30-2 and two against the spread, and then Rodgers off a of bye, 13-6-1 and one against the spread. So those would maybe be some situations uh, some opportunities where I might be looking to bet on the Jets this team. Because even though, you know, I can see the, the case for being a little bit skeptical on them, I still view the Jets as a moderate bet on team this year. I think more often than not, I would rather be betting on them than betting against them. Now, let's talk about bets in the futures markets that we can place right now that we might be interested in. McEwen, I think you are enthusiastic about the Jets what is a bet for the Jets right now that you would be interested in making? I'm going to take them to win the AFC East Freeman. And listen, I've, I've taken Buffalo the last three years. They've made me a lot of money here in the future market. But this year, the value that we're getting on New York, I just believe is too good. I think Aaron Rodgers has that possibility, like I alluded to earlier in the podcast, to return to MVP form now that he is in a different environment, right? He's out of Green Bay. All the off-the-field distractions have been put to bed. He can just focus on going out, playing football. He knows where he's going to be playing. And now he has the weapons that we've mentioned, right? Garrett Wilson, and the list goes on and on and on. He's going to look more like the Aaron Rodgers from 2020 and 2021 than the version that we saw in 2022. I think 2022 is just one bad year, right? I mean, we've looked at his career. I would rather take that body of work over one year where – there was a lot going on off the field. And like we said, on the field, he just didn't have the weapons that he normally has. Um, so I think Rodgers himself is going to be in the MVP conversation. Right now, if you look at sports books, he has anywhere between the sixth, eighth best odds to win MVP. So the sports books believe that it can happen as well. Uh, Jets also to make the playoffs. You can look around, you can find that at minus 120 uh, some places. I think that's really good value. Even if they don't win the AFC East, right? Buffalo is the team to beat in the AFC East they could find their way in via the wild card. So I think there's multiple ways for New York to get in. That's probably the safer bet, but I think there's tons of value on the Jets to win the AFC East. It all comes down to how the surrounding play performs around Rodgers. I'm very confident saying Rodgers himself will put them in a position to win a lot of football games. Can this defense be a top five defense again in football? Can the offensive line hold up? There are things that I think can happen and will happen, but we will see. From a value standpoint, though, Freeman, go with the division. And then them to make the playoffs, again, a little bit of juice there, minus 120. But I think they will find their way into the postseason. I think they're too talented not to uh, you know, make their, make their way into the playoffs. Yeah, they're one of the few teams that has a real chance of having a top five defense and a top five quarterback. <laughs> you know, I mean, that if you have that, you're you're a pretty good shot to win your division. So uh, I can definitely see the, the bull case for them. I'm going to take a little bit of a bear case approach. Uh, you know, so I think if you are enthusiastic about how things go for the Jets, I think it makes sense to bet them on the division. I would say, it, you know, if you're enthusiastic, you can even bet them to go to the Super Bowl. You know, like I, I think if you're looking at the the tales of how this unfolds, like uh, you can you can go big. I, I think you can make the case for that. On the bear case, 
I'm going to be looking at Garrett Wilson under 1,150 and a half yards receiving. That's minus 105 odds at DraftKings. So I want to, you know, contextualize this bet a little bit. I do like Garrett Wilson. I think he's a good long-term player. I think there can maybe be some short-term hiccups with the connection with Rodgers. And then even if everything is fine with the connection with Rodgers, we could still see Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, Brees Hall, other guys in that offense get just a few more targets than we might expect. So I think for the over to hit, right, for Garrett Wilson to go over 1,150 and a half yards a lot of things have to go right. And if those things go right, I think that means that the Jets are an awesome team. And in that circumstance, I would just rather bet on them to win the Super Bowl or something like that. But if just one thing doesn't go right, like Garrett Wilson could get injured or Rodgers could get injured or Rodgers, you know, could be bad. Rodgers could be fine, but you know, the offense is more of a run heavy offense, right? Whatever it is, if any of these one things happen, then I think that means that the under is extremely likely to hit. So I'm going to be betting the under. I have this projected. You can find our projections at Fantasy Life. I have this projected for uh, Wilson, 1,000 and about 60 yards. So I'm seeing, you know, about 90 yards or so of value to the under on this. So I will be betting it again. It doesn't mean I think Wilson has a bad season. It just means that uh, I think there are a lot of things that go into the projection. And I still think he has over a thousand yards, but I will be taking the under here. I think there, there's a way. I mean, we talked about it earlier here on the podcast. There's a way that Wilson has a really good season for him and still goes. I mean, that's a huge number, right? And and like you said, there's a lot of things that will have to go right. Health being one of them, too. You know, that, that could always uh, be a hiccup on in both Rodgers and Wilson's health. So there's a lot yeah. of things. I agree. That's why uh, season props, a lot of times I do like to go with unders on that because there's so many things that have to go right, right? You know, that's also assuming that a guy goes out there and plays 16, 17 games. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I, I do like that play a lot. All right, all right. That is going to do it for the first episode, the inaugural episode of the Betting Life podcast. If you want more, check out the Jets betting preview. And then also McEwen has the AFC East breakdown. Check those out. Please subscribe. Tell your degenerate betting friends if you like the show. Hit up the Fantasy Life YouTube channel. We're going to have some non-NFL betting live streams there. Uh, Join the growing Discord community that we have. You can see all of our bets in the free Fantasy Life bet tracker. And follow us on Twitter at Picks. And Matt F. The Oracle, thank you and see you next episode.